room where we want to look at the devolution story and how the media has covered it whether they've done a good job now it is five years since the inception of devolution and as devolution continues uh, we want to find out whether whether the conference goes down in Kakamega we want to review how the media has covered uh, devolution uh, we are on the right track or not how do we rate the media in this devolution story welcome to the newsroom but before we even get to the newsroom I want us to first of all just touch base with our reporter, Willie Lusige, who is in Kakamega County. He has been there since the beginning of the conference. Thank you for joining us this morning, uh, Willie Lusige. We do know that the president opened the conference yesterday. What should we expect from the conference today and how are things panning out uh, from where you are? Willie. Good morning, Gitonga, and also good morning to all our viewers all the way from here in Kakamega County in the larger western region. Actually, the devolution, the fifth devolution conference is still underway, this being the third day after it was uh, launched on Monday, but officially it began yesterday by the key address that you have already noted by President Uhuru Kenyatta. He was expected to attend, but due to some uh, unavoidable circumstances, he could not make it to this venue, so he addressed the delegates via what we call a video link. But apart from that, the conference has, uh, is still going on as well but uh, up to now maybe the guests have not yet arrived because most of them do stay in Kisumu yesterday we saw other guests also speak one of them was the leader of a uh, minority at the house of the Senate James Sorengo who also insisted uh, that maybe on the position of the national government in making sure that all the devolved uh, counties also making sure that all the funds are supplied to the counties on time but apart from that yesterday we also had other the guests who spoke, the host uh, being the senator of uh, Kakamega County and also the governor. And also in the afternoon, after the president's address, we had the first session where we have, uh, we had the first discussion session where we have uh, four different conferences, mini conferences, where delegates are divided into four groups to discuss a few of the topics. Uh, one of the topics that was discussed was agriculture. The second one was urban development. The third one was all to do with housing. And the last one was to do with manufacturing. So after that discussion yesterday, we're expecting early in the morning uh, those moderators who are in charge of those discussions to give a, a brief recommendation or maybe the findings that they discussed yesterday. So early in the morning today, we are only expecting report from the moderators of yesterday's uh, session. But maybe to add on what will happen today, we are expecting Raila Odinga, who is the leader of the opposition or maybe the NASA, to be addressing the delegates here around 8.30 to 9 a.m. So today we think he's the main uh, speaker of the sessions today. But apart from that, also we'll have other mini sessions after Raila's speech where they'll keep on going uh, on discussions on different topics in regard to the four main agendas that President Uhuru Kenyatta insisted yesterday. But two, uh, two topics that have been uh, intensively uh, discussed here. One of them was uh, the rate of uh, what we call corruption in these devolved counties. And the second one was the, the delay by the Treasury maybe to disperse the funds to the county government. So all that we are doing here in Kakamega uh, is, is just to get the clear picture of the progress of devolution and maybe some of the challenges that hinder maybe transparency in these counties, especially when the government has been calling that uh, the county government should also work together hand in hand with the national government, Gitonga. I thank you very much, Willie Lusige, who is uh, giving us an update on uh, things as uh, well I expected to pan out today in the devolution conference. Today is day three of the conference and uh, that was that's what is expected. Thank you very much, Willie. Uh, we'll probably catch up with you later on just to give us uh, further updates once the guests and the delegates begin to arrive. For now, we want to get into the newsroom, and we want to look at the devolution story and how it has been told. And I'll start off, first of all, with uh, um, David Ohito, who is in Kisumu County. He is the chief of staff for Mandera County, but has vast experience in having worked uh, for the media and would understand the dynamics of how things work in the newsroom vis-a-vis. Uh, -vis. Now he's on the ground serving the people of Mandera as chief of staff. David, thank you for joining us this morning. And we're looking at the devolution story. Uh, maybe let's start off by some of the things you possibly have learned uh, having now left the newsroom and working uh, for a county government on the devolution story. Are there some things that you can highlight that possibly we may have missed out as the newsroom? Uh, thank you very much, Mike, for having me on KTN News again. 
It feels nice to be back to the newsroom after a hiatus of uh, several months. But uh, I must say that um, it's a very interesting job now. I'm on the other side of the camera, you can see. And uh, it's been a learning experience for me. But I would want to start by saying from the outset that uh, the devolution story is a very interesting story. This is what has transformed lives in many parts of the country and in many of the uh, 47 counties. If you look at, um, say, a county like Siaya, which used to just have or receive 50 million shillings recurrent expenditure for the DC and his uh, handlers to run around town, uh, that has been chained and scaled up to, say, uh, about 6 billion shillings. And this money is intended to go into various projects to transform lives and give better services to the people. Uh, but back to your question, has the media covered this story well? And I will say that uh, yes and no. Yes, because we have had a presence of uh, media in some few counties, and especially those counties along the railway line from Mombasa to Malaba. Uh, the traditional media has kept that wavelength of covering just those counties. I work in Mandera today and uh, one of the marginalized counties, and I would want to say that the presence of media is lacking or missing in those Asal counties, Turkana, Samburu, uh, Tana River, um, Isiolo. It's not as covered as much as we see Nairobi, Machakos, uh, Makueni, Mombasa, Kisumu maybe, that enjoy a lot of media presence just because the staff or journalists reside in these headquarters. But there's been a lot of good job also, uh, which has been done by lots of counties across. Um, I have spoken to several communication directors from all counties, but I think many governments in the counties still do not understand the role of the media properly. Uh, what we have is standard, and I don't know how it was created, something called uh, governor's press unit. But whether this governor's press unit is a PR window for the governor and his uh, ideas, still uh, remains cagey, but they always want to do the one side of the story. Uh, when there is what I would call fair criticism of services or jobs done by counties, uh, of course you'd expect, uh, just like uh, the Presidential Strategic Communication Unit, you know what direction they will take. So there has been that tricky balance. But I want to say that there are lots of stories that even the national media has failed to pick out. I was listening to the conference yesterday, and uh, you hear that Vihiga County, which receives about 5.5 billion, spends over 80% of that money on uh, recurrent expenditure, salaries and running around uh, of the offices which leaves just a paltry 600 million shillings to engage in development projects. We are waiting to see the first media house or the first journalist that will go and interrogate that story and say uh, what will happen to Vihiga, even if you give it that kind of money for the next 15 years. That is where I believe the newsrooms are failing. Two, many of the journalists uh, go for the sensational side an audit query raised by maybe Auditor General's office, uh, which just borders on receipts which have not been filed in good time, and they say a governor has lost money. Yes, it is good to report what the Auditor General has done, but it's also fair enough to have fair comment which is objective from those being accused. And finally, just in my summary of comments is, that in the first time of the evolution, there was a lot of demonization, a lot of concentration on the wars between the governors and senators. Uh, and this really demeaned the coverage of good devolution stories. But I, I am sure there are excellent stories of life-changing programs and projects which have been in, initiated in several counties. You've seen what McQueen is doing. Uh, if you come to Mandera, it's a total different game. If you go to Isiolo, you know, the town is robust. Um, and there are several 
you know, uh, improvements, especially in health services across the country. Thank you, Mike. It, um, and thank you very much for your opening remarks, David Ohito. We'll come back to you. But let me come to studio where I'm joined by two guests. And uh, to my extreme left, I have Aonchari Oyeyo, who's a researcher at the Center for African Progress, and also David Matende, who's a media consultant. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us this morning. Let me start with you, uh, Oyeyo. And uh, you've done a lot of research on uh, Africa. And we're looking at the story of devolution in Kenya specifically and whether we have uh, articulated that story well. We've heard from uh, David Ohito, there are certain uh, what I'd call details uh, that we possibly miss out. When you look at a county like he has mentioned, um, uh, Vihiga that is given that amount of money, uh, possibly and most of it goes to recurrent expenditure. Of course, that means that there's very little left for development, which is really what devolve government is really supposed to uh, concentrate on. Yeah. Your, first of all, your opening remarks on how we have told that story to Kenyans and whether we fully understand what devolution was supposed to deliver for us. Well, thank you so much for inviting me into the discussion. I think uh, as a media house, I have to be honest, we failed. We've not covered the story very well. And just like you've said, devolution was meant to bring development down to the grassroots. Mm. And uh, I think that is what's supposed to be the observation of the media, making sure that the guys who've been, you know, given responsibility to, enforce, to implement devolution as it is, uh, go at, down along that path of making sure the money from the national government goes to uh, development. So the media has not focused on how the devolved units are taking advantage of making use of the funds given mm -hmm. from uh, the national government. Mm -hmm. And then the other issues of, um, you know, scaling down the workforce, talk about other issues like, um, uh, expanding infrastructure and all that. In fact, devolution is about sharing the cake in terms of corruption. It's not about development. That's why we obsess with what's happening at the national level and not at the devolved units. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think uh, now corruption has become widespread in our counties compared to what's going on in the national government. And the media has not highlighted that as much. It's only the Auditor General keeps on telling us that we're making a, a, a mistake with the kind of expenses we're seeing at our counties. Mm -hmm. In fact, I think what I'm seeing nowadays is called yellow journalism. The media gets obsessed with very, very catchy headlines about specific counties and does not focus on what is significant or what's important mm -hmm. uh, for the ordinary manager. But we manager. must understand at the end of the day that uh, even as media houses, we must sell the newspapers, we must <laughs> sell. Uh, so at the end of the day, as we, we need catchy headlines uh, mm -hmm. to also, because it's a business at the end of the day. Um, uh, David Matende? I agree with the Ohito and my colleague here that uh, half the story has not been told. Which, what has not been told? The story of the revolution uh, has been told, uh, as I said, in a, in a, a rather shallow way. Mm -hmm. You know, media tend to focus on the melodramatic, on the exciting, on the drama, on the conflict, and, uh, you know, avoid the real issues that affect uh, you know, uh, devolution. But then, even before I answer your question, I ask, what is media supposed to do? I mean, how, how are media supposed to report the story of devolution? How are they? You know, are they supposed just to give information in the way of reporting? Or are, are they also supposed to watch dog the government, local government? I think they are supposed to do both, provide information, about the region, what is happening, you know, the projects give, being carried out by the governors, you know, highlight, you know, the issues that uh, affect uh, governance, but also, as far as I'm concerned, the most critical issue for media here, like at the national level, is to oversight, you know, the uh, devolved units, and that they have not done well. That's why you hear money is being lost, but no, the, 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 there isn't a media house that uh, has... Although, although maybe you need to define when you say oversight what you mean, because we can only use the information that first of all is available to us, secondly, we do not have the power to um, control or say that money should be used in a certain way. What we can do is inform and highlight. I think, no, that is not what it is. Actually, when you look at what you call advanced societies in terms of uh, media, in terms of democracy, the media goes beyond just reporting. That is why if it's, for example, Christian Amanpo of CNN, 
a question in interviewing a particular personality in the United States, they ask very tough questions. For example, if a president is assumed to have lied about something, uh, the journalist gets to ask tough questions. Why did you lie? It's not an issue of whether you lied or not. Why did you it's, lie? It's why did you we lie? Don't, yes, we don't do that here. Meaning they already have the facts as to whether That is it. So you guys need to invest a lot of money in research and come out with information. So when a politician or a leader shows up in your house, you ask tough questions. Why did you do this? That is your job as a media house. Actually, the fourth estate is the most powerful entity we have in the world right now. And in Kenya, I think you guys are doing a big disservice to the citizens of the country because you're not asking the tough questions mm. you should be asking. You, you know what, Mike? Mm. Sorry to cut him short. short eh? As a journal of journalism, known as investigative journalism. You know, this is where a journalist goes beyond, you know, what is on the surface. What we are doing here is simply scratching the surface. There are a few journalists in Kenya now who, who go beyond reporting. Mm -hmm and uh, do what we refer to as investigation, you know? Finding out you know, how our governors are spending this money, you know? We hear the, the, a lot of money is being lost in the devolved units, but how is this money getting lost, you know? Who has investigated to bring to light how this money is being, you know... How it's being misappropriated. misappropriated. Okay. Um, and maybe let me bring in David Ohito, who is uh, in Kisumu. And David, you certainly have worked in a media house and in a newsroom and know that, uh, first of all, it is uh, an expensive exercise to uh, get into investigative journalism for several reasons. One, it takes time. Two, it takes a lot of resource, uh, but your thoughts on whether we are scratching the surface or there are certain stories that we've done in depth and your advice on how we can uh, possibly do that in a better and more effective way. David. Thank you, Mike. I think the beginning point in all newsrooms should be journalists assigned uh, to particularly chase the devolution stories. And these journalists must be familiar with chapter 11 of the Constitution, the principles and objectives of devolution. Before we understand that, it's very difficult even to cover. I know for the marginalized county like Mandera where I work, the challenge has been that no media house can invest as much as resources to have senior journalists to chase stories from those areas. What we have, um, uh, barely well-trained journalists or somebody who just has interest in writing or camera work and they are expected to do uh, in-depth stories. It's almost impossible to do that. So the starting point is to understand what devolution was set out to do in this country. Uh, how do we, for example, uh, chase um, uh, principles of democratic and accountable governments because there have been complaints from MCAs and this will never end just like with the national government and our MPs that counties are abusing some of the resources but you know you need to get journalists behind the story who will investigate and at the same time also give fair hearing to these persons accused of having fraudulently or abused the resources. Two, it is time also to build uh, capacities of journalists to be able to carry out these stories. I know there have been uh, a few uh, civil society organizations that have spent resources uh, trying to uh, build the capacities of journalists to do this. And that has gone only so far. And three, I think it's also important to understand the critical functions performed by these counties. I have had several media requests, for example, even in Mandera, where I've just been for three months, that uh, what is the governor doing about uh, teachers who are leaving uh, or teachers who are facing terror threats and so on? And we keep on saying, we, the journalists either do not understand what are the core functions of the county government, what are the functions that have been devolved that are assigned to the governor. We have questions bordering on security, and you still have several people asking the governors, what are you doing about security? 
there has been uh, intergovernmental relationships between county governments and the national governments. What roles do they play at their level? In terms of security for Mandera, I would say the county government, for example, has hired, uh, so, uh, has brought on board support, logistical support for Kenya police reserves. And we have enjoyed a lot of peace. For example, over the last two years, there has not been a single terror attack within Mandera town. Previously, in the first two years of devolution, there were 209 attacks in Mandera town alone. So what functions and where is the borderline between the national government and the county government? And these things are not similar. The challenges of Mandera are very different from the ones in Kiambu, Sierra, and Kisumu. And it becomes very difficult to try and see even rate how governors have performed. In Mandera, for example, there is no electricity by the national grid, though Kenya Power has generators, which is Yes, yes. OK, yes. allow me to interrupt a little bit. And I, I, I and want us to, first of all, focus on what you've just brought out there. And it's the understanding of devolution uh, in the newsroom. But also, um, when I come back to you, maybe I'd like you to address or look at uh, the question of uh, whether we need to also have maybe like um, not media houses in every county, but representatives posted in every county who possibly understand the dynamics of each county because each is different. But let me come to you in studio and I'll start with you, uh, Oyeyo, on the question of do, do we need possibly to have like... Um, not a conference, but an education seminar where journalists are educated on the functions, the different roles of, uh, of, of, of the county government. Because five years on, we cannot say that go uh, devolved governments are new. No, they are not new, of course. And um, I think that is going to be a job for the media houses because when you send a reporter to a particular place to cover devolution, it's your duty to make sure you send someone who is conversant with the functions of devolution itself. Mm -hmm. That is when you can collect quality information, of course, to share with members of the public. So the idea of uh, educating your journalists and all that so to collect the right information from the ground or from uh, devolved units is a responsibility of the media houses because, again, the quality of a, of a media house is directly proportional to the quality of the information you share out there. Now, back to the issue of uh, how you guys have covered the story. Mm -hmm. Remember the scandal of the wheelbarrow from uh, Western some yes. times back? Mm, the, now, the wheelbarrows that cost 100,000. Yes, that was, I think that was a good note to start covering devolution because at the end of the day, devolution is about development. It was about sending money down to the grassroots. And if devolution is not empowering people down there, then it's not uh, succeeding. And I think uh, the skipping of the event by the president is very telling. As much as, of course, we might want to dismiss it as something very small, mm -hmm. I think it's begun to lose uh, touch. It's begun to lose weight. It's become a talking shop mm -hmm. where governors go to, you know, have good fun and all that. So the president didn't see the need to go all the way to, 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 all the way. Uh, to, to open it. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you look at the program itself, you know, it's very shallow. It does not cover big issues. And we've had so many cases of corruption in in the counties. Now, um, when we had the scandal of the wheelbarrow, uh, it was, I think, a mark of uh, journalists being involved in trying to find out how money is being spent. Now what happened is we went back to what we do best, corruption. There is corruption in media, media houses. You send a journalist to cover a story that is, of course, uh, about embezzlement of funds, is given something small, and the story is killed. I've had so many cases of journalists in some top media houses mm. being paid to kill stories. Mm -hmm. So that is where we fail. In fact, we focus on when a governor does not pay a media house, you get a very bad headline. A case in point is recently when the nation had a screaming headline about the rot in Nairobi County. Right. We know very well Kidoro was governor for five years. Mm -hmm. He is spoiled in Nairobi. Uh, Moilen, which was covered by nation, uh, nation, the Daily Nation, was a dumping site. It was full of garbage. When the governor was elected, that is the new governor, all the garbage was picked and taken to Dandora, the dumping site. But you see now that was ignored, and the headline was totally um, unfair, if I have to you know, uh, offer my opinion. Now, that is when the governor does not play to the you know, whims of a particular media house. So there's a lot of corruption in media houses, which, of course, goes to affect the quality of the news you guys collect. Mm -hmm. So the story has not been told partly because of the corruption you guys have within... Within the, the institutions. The, uh, yes. Uh -huh. OK, um, uh, David, your thoughts on uh, possibly 
that angle that uh, maybe there needs to be a bit more civic education, if that's the word, uh, on journalists to understand devolution. What Ohito was highlighting is some of the questions sometimes you'll find a journalist asking a county official or governor are completely uh, questions they cannot answer because it's not within their mandate. That is a very important question, Mike. Thank you for that question. I've been waiting for it. <laughs> you know, Kenya has some of the best training institutions. You know, university, you know, colleges. Yeah, we have very many. We are actually and there are very many. Yeah, we are flagged yeah. with universities. So right? what are these institutions training? You would expect that they train quality uh, people. But uh, the reality is different. I have interacted with a lot of uh, journalists, having been chair of Kenya Union of Journalists. So I know the problems. I think the issue is our media houses hiring quality people. Because quality journalists are there. Kenya has some of the best journalists in the world, in, Af in Africa, actually. Mm -hmm. In fact, only second to South Africa and Nigeria. Now, do these journalists understand uh, the devolved functions? I think that's the question. I think the majority of them understand. You know, senior journalists do, the editors do. The ones you call provincial editors or bureau chiefs, they do. The thing is, are they assigning the right people to cover the devolution story? Uh, the answer is yes or no. There are some cases where journalists understand these issues. There are cases where they don't. I don't think we need uh, a workshop to train journalists on these things. It is, the, uh, it is the duty of individual media houses to assign equality journalists to cover uh, you know, devolution stories. There is a, an institution known as the MCK, the Media Council of Kenya. Uh -huh. It has been trying to do things on that uh, topic. In fact, they even have a report about how media have covered uh, you know, the devolution story. And uh, I think the latest I saw, they were saying, newspapers have done better than TV and radio. They, they, in, on average, they gave 7% they gave of their space mm -hmm. to devolution. In that period, the, the, the research was conducted. Uh, radios were five. But they also say that, uh, that these vernacular radios, you know, by the way, even before you forget, these vernacular radios have done a good story. I do on work devolution. on devolution. And, uh, on educating uh, the, the electorate on devolution. Yes. For okay. exa you gave the example of Higa, which is my constituents, mm. a constituents I know very well. Mm. There are several radio stations there. And uh, every time I go down there, mm. you know, the stories are. But you see, it, it is not just the amount of stories given out to the public. You know, what type of stories are they? You know, if you are just, report yeah, if you are just reporting what the governor is saying, mm -hmm. just reporting, then really you are not doing a good service. Mm. Yes. All right, and uh, we are almost winding up, but let me come to you, David Ohito, uh, from Kisumu, and possibly as uh, you give us your closing remarks, but also, is it uh, possible that what we also need is to have uh, specific journalists uh, dispatched in areas where they can understand the terrain? Uh, because when you have, for example, a journalist sent from Nairobi to Mandera, uh, and they're there for three, four days, are they going to be able to capture uh, the real story on the ground? Or do you need somebody who is there who's able to churn that out? Uh, is that possibly a way that we should go, David? Thank you very much, Mike. I, I think a good journalist is a good journalist, and uh, it's a global standard. A good story will always be a good story. Uh, I would prefer a blend of both, whether you have a senior journalist coming to work in uh, tandem with the younger and perhaps those who work in the counties to look at stories differently and to see things perhaps which the eyes of the ordinary journalist uh, may seem normal. I think we, it, it's a good mix to do and a good trial, though it's an expensive exercise. But I know, for example, that every other county has a semblance of a communication or a media department. What we need to do is to have journalists, especially for those in a TV industry like yourself, work with the, uh, the, the TV crews of the governors and tell them this story. Don't just give me what the governor said, but also give me the criticism of the people or public participation stories that people, how they think and perceive certain projects. I think in that way we will be taking uh, coverage of devolution to the next level. 
And two, uh, I think there needs to be a, a, a lot of resources also uh, within counties themselves. And this, I'm talking to the county governments. What you hear from the directors of communication is lack of budget. We don't have resources. They are unable even to carry out a small TV uh, production or video production or they can't write a uh, one-page newspaper. I think it is time for the county governments to invest in experienced journalists who can add value to their communication processes. In that way, you'll have excellent stories. And as I conclude, I think there are so many stories waiting to be told, both award-winning at that level, you know, I was just sending some photographs of floods from Mandela last week to media houses, and it tells you, you know, how a place that has not experienced rains for close to a whole year, you know, can just be flooded. And that is a story, a story that needs to be told, perhaps pursuing the climate change angle. And I believe this is the time to cover uh, the evolution better in the second term. And it's going to be a problem still for the first term governors. Uh, the ones who are doing their second terms are more experienced and have seen it all in their first term. So it's be, going to be easy for them. Thank you. Joining us this morning, let me come back to studio now. Uh, Oyeyo, your closing comments. But also, you did mention that uh, sometimes there's compromise on what uh, is sometimes called a brown envelope uh, journalist. But that it, it swings both ways because uh, they're not bribing themselves. They, it's definitely coming from somewhere. Yeah, of course someone has to say no. And you know, the media is expected to uphold higher standards of integrity when it comes to, you know, the kind of service they offer. And uh, if politicians, of course, have always been corrupt, we expect journalists to be different. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, that's my expect expectation, at least as a Kenyan. Now, uh, my closing remarks. If the media wants to tell the devolution story in a way that is going to be beneficial to Kenyans, number one, they have to be professional. Professional means you don't go to report as a way of settling scores. If there's flooding in Nairobi, there's also flooding in Narok and other places. Let's have all the governors being questioned. Don't feel like now the governor of Nairobi, you know, does not like me, so let me go and report so much about Nairobi in a negative way and ignore the other places. What that means is you're ignoring the suffering of other Kenyans in other places as you settle your scores. Number two, get rid of corruption. Number three, understand devolution as it is. That is when you can report on how Objectively it's, and effectively. Yes. All right, uh, your closing comments, uh, David Matende. Thank you, Mike. You know what? Uh, the County Governments Act, I think it is 2012, requires that uh, devolved units give out information to the people. They explain what they are doing to the people. County Government Act 2012, I think. Now, many county governments have set up communication departments. Whether they are giving out the correct information to the public is another story. Now, my closing remarks is county governments need to strengthen, you know, their communication departments, you know, hire highly qualified professionals to run them, you know, and provide, you know, quality professionals will provide quality news to the journalists. Secondly, for the journalists, uh, many of them, and I give the example of Higa as uh, David Geff, uh, are embedded. In fact, in most cases, they appear as if they are part of the entourage of the governor. They are <laughs> given lifts, you know. So if, if, if you are such compromised, you know, can you really oversight uh, this county government? So what media houses, the KTN, you know, uh, Nation Group, ETC need to do is to empower the grassroots the, the journalists. Grassroot journalists. Thank you very much, yeah. gentlemen. We'll have to wind up there because of time. And uh, that's uh, David Matende, a media consultant. We also have Onchari Oyeyo, researcher for Center for African Progress. And also we had David Ohito, who was joining us from Kisumu County. 